So when you're when you're going to make the graphs of this, don't forget that what we're graphing is what we're going to graph is this is the angle, and this is the well for this one this is the sine ratio of that angle. Now I've I've set up the axes based on what you may already know that it's the sine ratio and the cosine ratio don't go outside of there. They don't go higher than one or lower than negative one. They're always in between those values. And you know the general shape, but you want to plot some points on here to get the shape correct. So that's what that's what all of this is about here. And again, remember that these are all related. You know, if, if one over two is one of the values for 45 degrees, five or four, all of these are going to be related. It just sometimes they'll be positive and sometimes they'll be negative. This number, I, the reason we changed it to a decimal here is because to put it on a graph, you need a, you know, it's easier to think in terms of the decimal for where to put it. Remember that the shape of the graph, what happens? Like as you go around, the sine ratio, if we're, if we're modeling the sine ratio, as the angle gets bigger here, uh, as you start here, this is the sine ratio, right? It gets it gets bigger to a value of one. That's what it maxes out, and then it goes back down. When you get to 180 degrees or pi, it's back down to zero, and then the other half of it is symmetric, it, except it's below, and it goes back up to there. That pattern would keep going, right? It doesn't stop at two pi. If you kept going more than one rotation. It's going to look like that. Now, on, in that tutorial, you're combining this with some of the things you know. This is one of the things you know. If the, so if this is pi here, and I have this divided up into six squares here, six units, right? The grid has six squares where pi is. How much is one grid? Or how much is one square on the grid? Six pi is here. There are six pieces, right? So this is pi over 6, right? Pi divided by 6 or 30 degrees. What did you just learn before lunch about the sine ratio for pi over 6 or 30 degrees? But which, which triangle was it and what was the ratio? 1 over 2, yeah, 1 over 2, right? So that's why this is a half here. And then if you did 60 degrees, it was root 3 over 2, which is like 0.87, which is up here, right? So you could plot that point. And then for the other ones here, you need to think about, uh, you're going to just think about the, the definition that we had for them. So for the numbers here, you might just memorize sine of 5 or 2 or 90 is 1, goes back down to 0. The best way to remember the values for those quadrant angles is just knowing what the graph looks like. So if you go, I mean, I'm going to skip back to this here. Knowing the quadrant angles, which I actually ask you at some point here, right, what's the... What's the sine and the cosine of zero? What's the sine and the cosine of this? Think of the graph for that, for those values when you need them. You should know that, you should have a picture of this in your mind that that's what the graph of sine looks like. Although probably you're just going to remember that part. And it goes up to one and down to negative one. And it goes from zero to two pi. It's symmetric. I didn't draw it very well, but you should know that at pi, it's back down to zero. And at pi over 2 or 90 degrees, it's 1. And at 3 pi over 2 or 270 degrees, it's negative 1. So you should, you should know that as you, as you fill this out. When you, look at, when you look at these, you should know that sine goes from 0 to 1. And cosine goes from 1 down to 0. Again, using the graph, sine looks like that. Not really, but... And cosine looks like that. Only you're going to draw it better. Use the pattern in what happens if, with the unit circle. As you go around the unit circle, remember that we shaded in before we said sine is positive up here and sine is negative down here. So in between those values, as you're going around here, it's not going to let me rotate a line around, but as I'm going around here, if it's positive there and negative there, it's zero here. Sine is zero at those places. And it's one up there and it's negative one down there. It follows, it follows the y-coordinate of a point, right? So at the top, the y-coordinate's one, and at the bottom, the y-coordinate's negative one. And then on the axis, it's zero. So sine is going to go from zero to one to zero to negative one back to zero. So when you're drawing that graph, keep that in mind. But cosine, on the other hand, is 
back to this picture, right? All cosine follows the x coordinate. So just think about what the, if you need to know one for 90 or 270 or 180 or one of those ones on the quadrant boundaries, think about the, think about that, that it's going to follow the cosine is going to follow the x coordinate, sine is going to follow this. Cosine starts at one and it goes down to zero as you go around and then it goes down to negative one and it goes up to zero and back up to one. The, the shapes of the graphs are the same, it's just that they start in a different point. The pattern for sine is zero up to one, back down to zero, negative one, zero, and it just keeps fluctuating between those values. Cosine has exactly the same point, except that sine starts here and cosine starts here in the pattern. It just starts at a different point in the pattern. Okay, because if you wrote out this, it's one, zero, negative one, zero, one, negative one, right? This is the same pattern as this, it's just the starting value is different. And given that the, you could go into negative angles, so you could continue either pattern, all right? You could go into negative angles, so you could just continue this back to the left here, either way. Once you have the whole graph, you don't know what, you know, it, the only way you can tell the difference is where it starts at zero. So for this tutorial, it seems like a lot of pages here, but what you're doing is you're just, trying to create an accurate looking graph that's much better than the one that I just drew like that, right? So that's not it. You know that when you're drawing sine, it starts at zero, so put a point there. If you know something about the graph there that, well, it's going to go up and then it's going to go back down again to at pi, zero again at pi, put another dot there. And then it's going to go down and up again and it's going to be zero again there. You might know that halfway in between here, it's up at the top, I don't know. And then you're going to fill in some other ones. Now, I did this differently than the one I just showed you. Here, pi is 12 squares. So how big is one square? What does that represent? Pi over 12, right? However many squares pi is divided up into, that's what one square represents. If I wanted to know how much pi over 6 was, how many squares is that? Yeah, two squares, right? So then if I, want to, if I want to plot a point for pi over 6 or one of the values I know for pi over 6, like if I know that at pi over 6 it's a half, you can put that point on there, right? Pi over 6, it's a half, it's going to go through that point. So you're just creating a nice shape of the thing here. Don't forget the pattern keeps going. So if it goes up to a half there, what if I keep going the other way? What other ones are going to pass through here? This is negative pi over 6. It's going to be negative a half because it's a nice smooth curve that keeps going. So I'm going to leave that up to you to try and finish 3, 4, 3, 5 today and make the connections between the two. It's actually good we're doing those on the same day. And then towards the end, I said we were going to do it before lunch, but towards the end we'll practice using exact values with our little game thing we were going to do. It's not really a game, but... Can you get going on there? Can you keep yourself from getting off task or just starting to have a conversation? I guess. I guess if you insist. <laughs>